Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to just remind you of the sad reality that a narcissistic person can never allow you to be happy. This has come up uh, recently. A few people have mentioned stuff like this, so I thought it would be a good time to revisit this topic. One thing you'll probably notice when you're dealing with a toxic person is the ebb and flow of uh, emotions that you feel around them, or maybe a better way to put it is when they allow you to feel well. Let me ask you this, how many people out there watching this right now can recall a time that out of the blue, when everything seemed to be good, you seemed to be happy, everything was on track, and your ex, or maybe even your current spouse or relationship freaking grabbed the rug and pulled it out from underneath you, leaving you feeling like, whoa, what the, what the hell happened? It's one of those things where if they decide that you can be happy, then you can be happy. <laughs> if they can be in charge of it or if they can be responsible for it, for it, then maybe it's okay. But one thing you'll probably notice is if you start to feel okay, if things start to feel pretty good, and you're feeling every, like, you know, maybe even you're like going, man, my life is pretty, pretty great right now. Hopefully the uh, wind isn't too bad right now. You will probably recollect a time where that is when an argument ensued. That's whenever they make some grand announcement. I'll give you an example. Way back when I wanted to do stock photography and I sat down with my wife at the time and I said, hey, let's do this. This looks like it could be a, a good thing to do and we could potentially replicate my income do it with this photography thing might even enable us to be able to move so basically give us an opportunity to for me to switch careers and for us to end up where we wanted to go she wanted to go to the midwest and we talked about it and i'm like hey you know it looks like there's some great opportunities here it looks like people can actually make money i knew some people who were doing okay you know not necessarily enough to retire on or basically you know replace a career on but enough to where it was like, hey, this might actually work. This might actually give us the opportunity to hit the reset button and do something different. And at the time, I was going through some college classes, or a college class, and, uh, and I decided, you know what? This is just for my career path. It's not going to help me. This is something I really want to do. So I backed off on that, you know, dove to, like to a month or two into this, photography thing we were using the kids as a as models um, there's some there's some stuff where you know there's I've actually run across where my kids have been used as a uh, in advertising campaigns so it was kind of cool and so I was po posting posting not posting focusing focusing all my attention on that I was feeling really great things were going really good and I remember this time we were riding back from town I don't even think we had done anything photography wise. We were just, you know, heading back. And then she basically says, you know, I was thinking, I don't think we should do this anymore. I think it's a bad idea. And I was just like, I mean, I almost wanted to drive off the road. I'm like, what, what, you know, but I, now I can look at it. I was feeling happy. Things were going good. And a narcissistic person who cannot stand to allow you to be happy will find something that's really important to you and basically crap all over it. I've seen this happen with my kids. I've seen this happen with uh, clients I've coached. I've seen it happen in real life. <laughs> I mean, it, people like this are, well, they're messed up. And when you're living in that environment, it makes you feel like you're going crazy because it doesn't make any sense. It's like one minute things are great, the next minute they're not. Then you feel, you feel good, you feel bad. It's this roller coaster of emotions that you just can't seem to figure out. The, the hard part is, is if you're in the middle of it, if you're living this right now, if this is your life, if this is your existence, then it's really hard sometimes to see the reality of this because they do it in such a way that it's hard. It, it's easy looking out, looking back in to see it, but when you're in the middle of it, for whatever reason, we just can't see it. 
you know? And then what happens a lot of times is, and this is what happened in that particular situation, you know, completely wiped me out emotionally. I mean, I was just depressed, you know? And then it was like the next day, the next day or later that day or something, it was like, well, I guess it's okay, right? I mean, it's like, okay, they look at you, it's like, okay, have, we, have, I, have I broke them down? Have I broke them down enough to where they've lost everything and they feel really crappy? They can't dig themselves out of it, so I'll do it. So I'll be the hero and I'll be the one that gets everything back on track. It's an evil, it's an evil cycle of abuse, just to be clear. So here's the thing. If you find yourself in this mode, you have to start slowing yourself down and really look at the reality of the situation. Look at the facts. Look at uh, the patterns of behavior. A narcissistic person, when you're in a relationship with them, typically won't allow you to do that. They'll typically give you that ebb and flow, that drip and drab, drip and drab, I don't know if that's right. Ebb and flow. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. It's like they'll restrict, restrict it, and then they'll feed it to you. And it's like this constant, you know, give and take to control your emotions. You know, it's like maybe after that, they'll give you some attention. Or maybe if you're married, maybe it'll be sex. Maybe it'll be something that you really want. Maybe, uh, you know, it, and you think at the time, you think like, oh, wow, this person really cares about me. This person really really loves me. This person, you know, actually does give a shit about me. Reality is they don't. Problem is, is we get stuck in this childhood, childhood wound. I know a lot of people talk about that, but the reality of it is, is a lot of times we're in these modes where our current relationship is a surrogate for someone in the past. And we're trying to say, well, that person couldn't really love me, so this person does, and you don't want to give up hope on it. So you allow this mind, I don't know, this mind control, this mind screw thing that's going on and uh, make excuses for it. The other thing that's important, I want to just say, with, if you're watching this video now, you've already probably already been through this, a lot of times people in our situation keep going back and forth, questioning whether it's real. If you find yourself in that mode, think back to times like what I just described. And if that is what you're experiencing, if that's what's going on, then make sure that you remember that. Make sure you remember the reality of it so that you know that it was fake. The hard part about this is when they do something that we think is nice, we think it's genuine they're doing it for us. But the reality is most of the time they're doing it for themselves and they're doing it to basically manipulate and control you. Because if you think, oh, see, that person really does care, then you'll ignore the past emotional trauma or the past abuse because you're so starved for that little nugget, that little morsel of goodness that you're trying to find. The next part about this that I just want to say is if you have children with a person like this, you can expect that they will do the exact same thing to the kids. And I'll tell you, it is hard to watch. When that happens, it's not going to, well, if you're like me, it's not going to be a good day. You're not going to be like, yes, now the kids know. Now, now that, you know, now that they're experiencing it and, you know, they're going to have to accept the reality. It's not going to feel like that. You're going to feel sad that your kids have to go through this. It's going to hurt you that, that you've gotten into a situation where this is your life and this is their life. You can't go, <laughs> you can't go run into your kids and say, you know, narcissist. You can't go, you know, try to expose. Don't, don't do that, please, please, please. Don't do that. You're going to have to let them figure it out on their own. If you try to point it out, they will double and triple down and try to everything in their power to prove that uh, you're wrong and uh, they don't want to believe you. So you can't, unfortunately we can't, you can't be the one to help your child through that reality. So just uh, be aware of that.
So on that, what I would say is, guys, try to find your peace and, and find a good day. I, I had kind of a conversation, argument, I guess, with someone in the comments who is just, you know, yeah, you're just faking it. You can't fake being happy and, and whatever. And, you know, there's faking happy and there's finding happy. And we have to. You owe it to yourself to find a way to be okay with all this crap, to find a path to where you, you enjoy your life. And I think in my last video or a couple of videos back when I talked about this, I was like, you know, hey, if camping is your thing, great. Because camping's kind of my thing. It makes me feel good. It makes me just to get out. It's just relaxing. It's, it's, it's one of those things that maybe if you're not wired the way I am, maybe it won't work the same for you. But for me, when I'm out there and it's just quiet and you don't have a dog barking in the background and you don't have cars driving around, you know, and it's just quiet. And maybe if you're lucky enough and there's a body of water next to you, whether it's the ocean or it's the, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, a stream or waterfall or something, you know, I, whatever it is, I don't, if it's walking in, you know, walking around the park, whatever it is, find your thing that makes you happy to your core by yourself. So it's not dependent upon anybody else. It's not dependent upon somebody else giving you attention or somebody else giving you love or whatever, that you can find your own peace. Because once you do, once you really do, it just starts growing and growing and growing and building upon itself. So on that, I don't know if you can see, but I got my, getting my truck loaded up for a trip. I'm taking two weeks off coming up here. And uh, from the 16th, 16th, 17th, 17th, through like the 29th of June, if you're watching this, you know, Late, later, I guess, 2020, uh, 2021, we are heading up the, uh, the west coast, going to be going, going up through Cambria, up the one, all the way up the coast into Oregon and Washington. We'll be visiting uh, Debbie's uh, daughter and sister and exploring up there. I'm hoping to uh, meet up with a couple of people, myself, um, you know. If you're up in that area, drop me a note. Maybe, uh, maybe we can go get a coffee or something. So on that, don't let these people destroy your life. They will try really hard. All right, take care. Catch you on the next one. Bye.